You know, it's the last Bass Pro Tour event of the year. You know, it's been a long season. Went through a lot of conditions, you know, in the spring that were really tough. Those first couple of events had some great tournaments there. It's, it's really been an up and down, you know, year for me. Had some great opportunities, you know, let a few of them slip by. I'm really looking forward to this one here at Mille Lacs. This is a place that, you know, I fished two times for AOI championships here the same time of the year. So that history there, you know, I feel really good going into this event. You know, there's always a lot of tension and stress on the last event of the season. And, you know, I mean, you got red crest qualifications on the line. You got guys that are worried about falling out of the Bass Pro Tour. You've got heavy hitters. You know, it's all about the points and it's all about your standings, how you, you know, everybody wants to finish the year strong, but everybody's got something to gain or lose here. You know, the tension's high. everything up let's roll last tournament of the season and you know I mean everybody's fired up it's a great fishery but our forecast is brutal the next two days for practice so it's gonna blow super hard out of the south today 20 with gusts to 40 tomorrow it's gonna switch out of the north basically do the same thing so practice is gonna be a real challenge Got a really brutal forecast for the, you know, for practice for both days. So today it's gonna blow out of the south and this lake is basically a big round bowl. It's gonna blow 20 mile an hour sustained with gusts 30 and 40 throughout the day. And then tonight it's gonna turn around and shift right out of the north and do the same thing tomorrow. It's gonna really make it a challenge these next two days because this is, a, I mean, it's an offshore fishery. There's there's some backwater areas like this that got cattails and there's some large mouth. You know, this lake is known for its trophy smallmouth. You know, that's what we need to target. So having a little bit of history right here from the past could really help me or hopefully I don't, I don't get out there chasing ghosts. On this lake, there's a ton of offshore structure, but you're, I'm really looking for these real, like you can see how rocky it is right there, right on that little, right on this little break. And it's kind of the inside edge of a long gut. There's, you know, a lot of little isolated boulders and things like that too. And it's not like Lake St. Clair where you can just drift a big flat and they're just randomly some here and there. I mean, if, if they're on bait or something like that, that happens, but most often they're not here. They're focused on this rock on the bottom and they're gonna be real specific. On these, on these small spots. This is the one lake that I've done this lots and lots of time. There's so many crawfish on the bottom. This is what they eat right there. So you can see the color. And that's really typically what I focus on crankbait wise. But when you're snagging you know, crawfish, there's a lot of them down there. You know, I fished two AOI championships up here the same time of year. Uh, it's 2016, 2017. And the biggest thing on the Great Lakes, man, is, is the bottom doesn't change. And these fish, they relate to rocks and rocks formations, and it takes a lot of time to find them. The first one I hooked, I couldn't even do anything with. That's just a nice three-something pounder, though. But yeah, that, that 5XD, man, is such an efficient tool for covering these, you know, 10 to 15 foot flats like this. There's one little guy. This is how they're built here, you know. Look how fat that thing is for his size. A lot of smallmouth in here. They just grow real slow, so they've got a lot of trophy regulations here on all their different fish and but with the our catchway release you can still do it but I mean that one is not going to be scorable but he's not far he's chunky oh gosh there was one just creamed it uh-oh uh-oh right where they're supposed to be good one too just at about giving up on the old shallow deal and then look at there there's a dang five pounder up there in in the dirt five pounder but real dark 
real thick, big broad tails. But that's what we're looking for right there. Yeah, they're here. Another big one. There's a ton of them in here like this. Here, you know, you need to find an area where you're gonna get into groups of them. You know, where you catch them cast after cast. And with practice, you know, being so windy like this, it makes it really hard to move around to do that. And water temperature 73 degrees still. It's like summer temperatures here. So I'm sure a lot of the fish are still way offshore in their summer patterns. But with this wind today and then it's flipping out of the north, the temperature's dropping, it's, it's going to flip the lake and, and it's going to change the fishing overnight. Every time that I catch a bass here, I can look at my electronics, I can look at the Lake Master Chip, and, and I can kind of see why he's at. They're, you know, compared to other smallmouth fisheries where they'll roam the flats, you know, like St. Clair especially, they'll just randomly be out in different areas. They go where the bait's at. Here, it's all about the bottom composition and those, you know, those changes, those rock structures, and it's very specific. You've got to make the precise cast on those structures to get these fish to bite. You know, whether you're finesse fishing or you're power fishing, you can't catch them if you're not throwing right in front of them. So that's what's very different about Mille Lacs. You know, for me, practice was pretty solid in the fact that I really was able to put together what I think a lot of the fish are doing. And I, I think also based on the timing in this big cold front that we got that first day where, I mean, it was so windy, it made it hard to, hard to move around, but I got quite a few bites still. You know, yesterday, kind of late in the day, I, I really started putting things together the last few hours to really figure out what these fish are, are transitioning. And it is, it's right at that time right now where they're transitioning from the summer patterns. A lot of these fish have lived offshore on these main lake reefs. Even out there, they're just moving to the shallower areas and they're really focused on rock formations. It's, it's not like they're just randomly swimming down these flats. I mean, they are specific on these key bigger rock piles or by these bigger boulder flats where the biggest rocks at if there's a little bit of depth change that's good too but just it's all about the rocks and that's where the crawfish are at so that's why they're hanging around those spots you know i always like to start the tournament with fresh line so you know right here i've got seven cranking outfits getting set up um, i'm going to rig them with different sizes of line some with some lighter line some with heavier line and that's just for the depth zone that i'm fishing but the way to do it is just tighten that spool tension knob down hit the button and i'll pull them all at once you know and that way you're a lot more fishing i only you know i only put about 70 yards of line on there so you can save some money that way and then i'll just have a knot in there so to do it like that but this way i'm stripping them all i don't have to rethread the guides or anything like that you know my dad always said work smarter not harder i got a feeling that a lot of people are fishing the same way as me i mean these fish are scattered right now so cranking is a really efficient way i mean they would you could catch them on other stuff i'm catching some jerking too but you know after two days of practice i, I feel good about it you know it's the last tournament of the year you want to finish strong you know i want to make red crest i want to make heavy hitters so you know i feel I feel really good about it. I can tell you there's a lot of tournaments that I go into where I don't have as good ideas as what I do right now. So you never know how things are going to work out, but right now my confidence level is up there. So today is my first day on the water. It's Sunday morning, you know, I'm in group B. Uh, after seeing what everybody did yesterday, it's about really about what I expected. You know, I've uh, got some history here. I've fished here in the past, in the, but I'm fired up. You know, after practice, uh, you know, this lake's got some big fish in it. I think I got a good pattern put together and I just got to go out there and execute and get them in the boat. I, I feel really confident going into this tournament. This is my strength fishing smallmouth in the north. So I'm expecting to, to do well. I love fishing this way. If there's one thing that you 
you want when you come up here is it's sun, which we're going to have that all day. But we're it's really calm. You know, it's slick calm this morning. Wind is is really, especially for the way that I want to fish, it's kind of important. And we're going to get a little bit of ripple later on, but uh, later in the week, I know we're going to get a little more wind. So got to got to fight through today. It's going to be a good day to be able to move around and, and be able to cover water for sure. If I can catch 15 bass or more, I'm going to have a you know I'm going to have a really good day. These fish are quality. The the bites that I'm getting there have been mostly big ones. So you know, 15 fish is is going to weigh quite a bit. Pretty solid start. We're, uh, you know, solidly in the cut. We just got to catch them again on Tuesday. And then the knockout round is going to be the real challenge. You know, that's going to be the day where you're going to really have to really have to catch them. But we got better weather coming. So I'm looking forward to, you know, the rest of the week. So good start to the day. Now these fish act a lot different than a lot of uh, smallmouth in, in our lakes and in the rest of the Great Lakes, but they are similar in a lot of ways. And, you know, it's all about reading the water and the structure. And, and that is something I definitely, you know, feel like I have an advantage at. You know, I've got a ton of confidence going into this but that being said I did when we were at Cayuga too and it didn't work out there but you know Mille Lacs is a, a lake that I'm real comfortable with and really look forward to the rest of the week. I think the wind would help me a lot and some of the guys that are finesse fishing and things like that it might hurt them a little bit so I, I've got a lot of water to run and and with the wind blowing it just I think it just gets the fish a little more active you know I feel good about the week I know I'll have a, a good chance you just got to execute you know I've, I've got to do a better job than I did today. You know, it's just, just the way it goes some days. And I, I've got a great system for cranking. I mean, it's the rod, the reel, the line, the bait, the hooks, the whole deal. And today was just one of those fluke days where my ratio wasn't near as good as it normally is. So we'll have a much better time the rest of the week, I'm sure. It's day two of the qualifying round for me. I had a, kind of an up and down day. I'm sitting in 11th, so I should be happy, but I had a lot of missed opportunities. You know, the, with, the, with the calm conditions, those fish just did not really want to eat the bait real well later in the day. It started out great, but, but struggled later on. So I'm looking forward to having a really good day today. Man, I just want to move on and make that knockout round. Tomorrow we're going to have a lot of wind. For my style, the way I'm fishing, you know, I've been cranking all week. That's what you need. Those are the conditions you really need. It makes it a little harder to move around. I've got a lot of water to cover, so hopefully we can uh, have a really good day today and move on to the knockout round. You know, if I can have a good day today and make it to the knockout round, you know, everything goes back to zero and you start all over again. So with the conditions that we have, I feel really good about my chances. And boy, if you can, you know, be in the top eight in that knockout round, then championship round same deal again this lake right here anything can happen I, I feel like I can uh, you know really fish well under those windier conditions so just love that opportunity so that's what we're that's what we're fighting for You know, I had two goals it, today is, you know, I really want to have a good tournament here and finish the Angler of the Year strong. And I was on the bubble for heavy hitters. So, you know, I, I, pretty quick, I caught a 5-1 and I said, yeah, that's, that'd be close to being good enough. But when I caught a 5-12, I'm like, I know that's, you know, that's, that's going to be a fish that's going to you know surely lock me into heavy hitters and and obviously it's a 512 so you know it, it really adds a lot to the score tracker and then i had a really comfortable lead so now it's it's really on to the knockout round and and just you know making sure that we can get through that if you can if i can get through the knockout round of the championship round anything can happen yeah my confidence is real high i know this lake pretty well and really being able to kind of call my shots as i go around i've got a lot of areas to fish 
lot that I haven't fished yet. Uh, and that's something that gives me a ton of confidence is that it's not like I'm just fishing one or two little spots and I've been pressuring them, you know. I'm, I'm fishing a lot of areas, covering a ton of water, got a lot of different fish and they move around a lot. Should bode well to be able to, to keep that momentum going. So it is the knockout round. I had a good day yesterday and we got a lot of different conditions today. 20 mile an hour winds today, it's uh, it's gonna be a lot different. It's gonna be harder to move around, but really based on the practice that I had, this is kind of what I planned for. I saw this coming in the week and the way that I'm fishing, it, it should help. Pretty dang excited about the day. Look forward to the opportunity and my goal, I mean, you just, boy, if you can make that championship round, uh, anything can happen because we're gonna have the same conditions again tomorrow. So I feel real good about today. You know, you always wanna finish the season strong, making the knockout around making another cut it's a big deal you know it's angler of the year points I had a 512 yesterday so that should solidify me for heavy hitters too and you, you just always want to finish the season strong it feels really good to be in the knockout round I want to have a great showing today and hopefully we can be uh, be fishing again tomorrow Today was a knockout round and man, I've never gone into one of these probably as excited as I was. You know, I had a, a good pl game plan. I've been catching them good. We had some wind today and uh, it just did not happen right off the bat. And it's so important to get off to a good start, especially here, there's a good early bite. And they just, with the wind, changing the wind direction, I just could not make it happen at all. So, uh, you know, fought and battled around to, to try to make it, you know, something go. And, Got on a few fish here and there. Ended up just losing a lot of them today. They were just biting kind of weird. Overall, you know, real up and down season. Some real highs and a couple of that I'd love to have back. But overall, you know, solid year. Qualified for Red Crest, heavy hitters. Can't complain too much, you know. So Kings of Bass is it's really fun to be a part of. You know, the crew works really hard out there on the road. So I hope you're enjoying all the footage, all the coverage that they're bringing to you. And we're gonna be doing it again next year. So really excited for a new season. Schedule should be out soon. Fired up to all ready to go. You know, I overall still, man, a really good year and, a, and another good season.